Imagine a circular room where two strangers stand facing each other. I ask you, what's the probability these two people share the exact same birthday? You might think for a moment and correctly answer, not very likely. Indeed, the chance is just 1 in 365, ignoring leap years, or about 0.27%. With only two people, a shared birthday is genuinely rare. Now let's add a third person to our room. What's the probability that any two of these three people share a birthday? The chances increase, but they're still quite low, about 0.82%. Add a fourth person? The probability grows to roughly 1.6%. A fifth person? Now we're at 2.7%. See the pattern? Each new person increases our chances, but even with five people, we're nowhere near a coin flip's 50% probability. So here's the question that stumps almost everyone. How many people need to be in this room for it to become more likely than not? That's greater than 50% probability. That at least two of them share the exact same birthday. Take a moment to think about it. Most people guess numbers like 183, half of 365, or even higher. But the answer is just 23 people. Yes, with only 23 random people in a room, the probability that at least two share a birthday exceeds 50%. This mind-bending result is known as the birthday paradox, and it reveals how deeply our intuition fails when dealing with probability. Before diving into why this result is so surprising, let's be clear about what we're asking. 1. How many randomly selected people do we need? 2. So that the probability exceeds 50% 3. That at least two people share the exact same birthday day and month. For simplicity, we're making two reasonable assumptions. There are 365 possible birthdays, ignoring leap years, and birthdays are distributed evenly throughout the year. Most of us approach this problem from a self-centered viewpoint. We ask, what are the chances someone shares my birthday? If you're in a room with 22 other people, the chance someone matches your specific birthday is indeed small, only about 6.1%. But that's not what the birthday paradox asks. It's asking whether any two people in the room share any birthday. And that's a completely different question. Here's where our intuition crumbles. When we have 23 people in a room, we're not just making 23 comparisons, we're looking at every possible pair of people. Let me help you visualize this. Picture 23 dots scattered on a page, each representing a person in our room. Now, draw a line connecting the first dot to every other dot. That's 22 lines. Then connect the second dot to every remaining dot. That's 21 more lines. Keep going with each dot. In the end, how many lines would you draw? The total number of possible pairs among 23 people is 23 choose 2, which equals 253 different pairs. That's 253 different chances for a birthday match, not just 23. Each of those pairs could potentially share a birthday. When you see it this way, the probability no longer seems so small, does it? Let's work through this calculation in a way that's easier to follow than a jumble of fractions. Instead of directly calculating the messy probability of finding a shared birthday, we'll use a clever approach. First, calculating the probability that everyone has a different birthday, then subtracting from 100%. Here's how it works, step by step. The first person can have any birthday at all. There are no restrictions. So their probability of having a unique birthday is 365 out of 365, or 100%. The second person needs to avoid the first person's birthday. They can have any of the remaining 364 days. So their probability is 364 divided by 365, or about 99.7%. The third person needs to avoid both previous birthdays. Their probability is 363 divided by 365, or about 99.5%. This pattern continues. The fourth person, 362 divided by 365, or about 99.2%. The fifth person, 361 divided by 365, or about 98.9%, and so on. By the time we get to the 23rd person, they need to avoid 22 already taken birthdays. Their probability is 343 divided by 365, or about 94%. To find the probability that all 23 people have different birthdays, we multiply all these individual probabilities together. First person, 365 out of 365, times second person, 364 out of 365 times third person, 363 out of 365, all the way to the 23rd person, 343 out of 365. 
After doing this multiplication, we get approximately 0.493, or about 49.3%. This means there's a 49.3% chance that all 23 people have different birthdays. Therefore, the probability that at least two people share a birthday is 100% minus 49.3%, which equals 50.7%. And there we have it. With just 23 people, it's more likely than not that at least two share a birthday. What if we keep adding more people to our room? The probability of finding a shared birthday skyrockets. With 30 people, about 70% chance of a shared birthday. With 50 people, about 97% chance. With 60 people, about 99% chance with 75 people, about 99.9% .9 chance. By the time we reach 75 people, it's practically certain that at least two people share a birthday. The probability approaches 100% faster than most people expect. When does the probability reach exactly 100%? When there are 366 people in the room. This comes from a beautiful principle in mathematics called the pigeonhole principle. If you have 366 pigeons, people, but only 365 pigeonholes, possible birthdays, at least two pigeons must share the same hole. It's mathematically impossible for 366 people to all have different birthdays when there are only 365 possible days. The birthday paradox isn't just a mathematical curiosity, it appears in surprising places. In computer security, this paradox forms the foundation of what cryptographers call birthday attacks. These attacks exploit the unexpectedly high probability of random collisions in hash functions. In genetic research, scientists must account for this paradox when calculating the significance of matching DNA patterns. Even in your social life, this paradox explains why coincidences, like meeting someone who knows your friend from another city, happen far more frequently than you'd expect. The beauty of the birthday paradox is that you can easily test it in real life. Next time you're in a class, at an office meeting, or at a party with about 23 people, ask everyone for their birthdays. According to our mathematics, about half the time, you'll find at least one shared birthday. What the birthday paradox ultimately teaches us is intellectual humility. Even with seemingly simple probability questions, our intuition can lead us badly astray. Our brains didn't evolve to handle these types of calculations naturally. The birthday paradox stands as a powerful reminder that mathematical truth sometimes lies far beyond our intuitive grasp, and that sometimes we need to trust the calculations even when our gut tells us they can't possibly be right. So the next time someone asks about the birthday paradox, you can tell them with confidence. It only takes 23 people to make a shared birthday more likely than not. Don't believe me? Get 23 friends together and find out for yourself.